Hey everybody, Nick here, and today, well, today I get to take this guy apart. This is the TRM Shadow. That's right, this is a brand new release from Three Rivers Manufacturing. It is effectively the uh, TRM Nerd in terms of overall shape, but done a little bit larger and with a, a sliding bar axis style lock. So um, first off, just so I get a quick sense of things, Looks like we are right on center. There is no blade play, either vertical or horizontal, which is great. Um, there is maybe a little tiny bit of stick on the lock bar here, but uh, I literally have had this for about an hour and change. Um, and I am going to not put Loctite on these back screws. I've been informed specifically that that would not be a great idea, um, and so I need to not do that. The other thing, though, is I'm actually going to try and do this in two different ways. I think it is a good idea for me to take this all the way apart just so that you all can see the internal construction of it. I know that's something that's important to a lot of people, and certainly it's important to me as I look at it, but but I'm also then going to put it entirely back together and show you how it actually, how I would recommend disassembling and maintaining the knife. Because with a sliding bar style locks, generally speaking, the full disassembly is oftentimes not actually what you want to do. So uh, I'm going to start off just by taking these back screws out of here. And uh, when I do so, I'm going to, oh, come on. Here we go. No, nope, no, nope, that wasn't the one I was after, but it was the one I got. Um, so I'm going to take this back screw out of there. Are you not all the way out of here? So you are not. Okay, beautiful. So I've pulled that out. Then I need to get this pivot. I'm not thinking I'm going to need to get rid of the, uh, the... This middle screw might be important, or it might not. We're going to find out. But in the meantime, I'm not going to put too much gronk on anything. That looks like a T10 right there. It was with T6 in the back. Yep, this is T10. A non-free spinning pivot, which is, by the way, very attractive. But I am uh, very sort of enthusiastic about this based on my early impressions. Just because it feels like TRM is doing a lot of the things that they tend to do well. The relatively thin blade, very thin grind, etc. And they're combining it with a pretty well-functioning sliding bar style lock. So um, that, to me, all works out to uh, excitement. Okay, so... Uh, next question is, what is the internal structure of this guy like? Right now, uh, so I've pulled the pivot out, and I pulled these three screws out. My next question here is always going to be, well, do I need to take anything else apart? If there is an internal liner, and I suspect there is, I mean, I know there is uh, up at this part here, um, I suspect it goes all the way back to this screw, but I don't think it goes all the way to the pocket, uh, pocket clip screws. And in fact, I can confirm that by grabbing my little flashlight here, and taking a look, and what we see here is that, no, the pocket clip screws are not embedded in liner, but it looks like the liner does come all the way down to about here. So, uh, that means I am going to need to take this guy out, and that's one more T6 screw. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that... I'm using my uh, little mat here that has holes for... Uh, has different holes, and I'm going to kind of arrange the screws in the way I took them off the knife. That way I don't accidentally try and put one in the wrong position. Although these three look identical. This one is shorter, and that's quite clearly a pivot screw. But at this point, I should actually be able to lift this guy off, at the very least the G10 scale. In order to try and move that along, what I'm going to do here, actually, I'm going to back the entire affair up here a little bit so you can see a little more clearly, give you a wider field of view. There we go. What I'm going to go ahead and do is use this little spudget tool. And by the way, if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using, including this guy from iFixit, um, uh, you can go to nickshabazz.com slash tools and you'll see a full list of everything I use. But um, nonetheless, one other thing that's worth highlighting, by the way, is that this construction is relatively integral and in that the G10 uh, is also the backspacer there. So that's kind of cool. But okay, there we go. We're popped apart. So what we see here is, God, that's intricate. Uh, some very intricate G10 milling. We see here a set of secondary um, posts in here to further reinforce the backspacer area, which is nice. Uh, we see some threaded inserts put into the G10, so it's not screwing directly into the G10, it's into these inserts here. And similarly, a set of threaded inserts over here for the clip is nice. Uh, we see a relatively full liner, actually. The liner on this is much bigger than on a lot of things, and how the hell do you get the axis lock off of this? I'm sorry, the sliding bar lock off of this thing. 
Okay, well, this is interesting. So um, here is my, my next question. I, I, I'm picturing Les over at DRM, their main designer slash magician, whatever, um, laughing maniacally to himself. Most uh, of these sliding bar style locks have a uh, basically an area where you pull where this opens up down here. And once you do that, that sh there it allows you a place to pull this bar out as a whole unit. It doesn't look like that's the case here. Instead, it looks like the screw, like I'm going to have to actually unscrew the bar here. Um, and this is not necessary. Again, I restate, this that I am doing here is not necessary for you to do to maintain this knife. Uh, as of right now, I see no reason why you would need to do this, period. Is this... Oh, no, that's T8. Okay. Uh, what we have here is a free-spinning... I am not going to ding them for free-spinning because it's literally a bar. It, it needs to be free-spinning. Um, there, there, there is no way that could not be free spinning, but still, um, and actually, you know what? I'm being dumb here. I'm going to remove the blade. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this little tool here and I'm going to press this out. This will allow me to remove the blade outright. There we see phosphor bronze washes, beautiful. And now the blade is out of play and I can go ahead and dig around with this without, well, with relative impunity, so to speak. Aside from this sharp corner in the back here from the G10, uh, I think we should be good to go. So I've secured that half with a T8, and I'm going to secure this part here, and then I rotate, rotate, rotate. Then this whole stud assembly is going to come apart. Oh no, it's just a little screw inside that. And then the head of this thing, of the bar, should come apart. And then if I... How the heck is this coming out of here? Well, actually, then I should be able to lift this whole affair. Okay, and now everything has come apart. So we see this half actually doesn't need to be disassembled further, although it is symmetrical based on all of my understanding here. This half here, we see this same omega-shaped spring right here, and we see that it goes into this same little slot up the front there, and you want to make sure that that's in position, right? If that little slot there, if that little wire here, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this more clearly, if this little bit here is not in its proper positioning, then the spring isn't acting on it. But okay, uh, and then this guy just came eating itself loose, and that's completely fine. But what we see here is the knife is completely apart, and the, the, the construction on it is um, actually quite sturdy. By the way, look at the chamfer on the side of this guy right here. That's kind of nice, right? But okay, uh, let's zoom ourselves back out here and go ahead and do some cleaning. Using some 91% isopropyl alcohol here. Just cleaning that up, <clears throat> uh, and beautiful. All right, so there's that. This guy, like I said, is factory fresh, and you don't need to disassemble it at all. Uh, well, I'm sorry, you don't need to disassemble it this way to do this, but nonetheless, I'll, I'll show you how to do it properly afterwards, but this way you see the entirety of how this knife is put together. And see, one of the things that is important as you do something like this is that you you kind of, well, I'm sorry, as you make a buying decision, at least in my estimation, is that you see what the internals are like, right? You see, oh yeah, here's how the pivot isn't free spinning. Nice. Uh, and then this part goes in here, beautiful. But now you know, for instance, that this not only has liners, but they're actually a little bigger than they needed to be and secured in place at an extra level with this little chunk of G10 there. This is actually quite impressively made. I'm always slightly concerned with TRM that I'm coming across as biased, but they are a company that, at least for my personal aesthetic, and given my aesthetic itself is a form of bias, but they are a company that keeps making knives that I really appreciate. Um, they've done the Atom, they've done the Neutron, they've done a bunch of stuff. The Nerd, etc., they keep doing really great stuff. Not everything they've made has been amazing, but they've got a much better track record than many. Uh, and so it's sort of one of those cases where... Uh, and the thing is... Um, the way to check for bias is see if other people agree. Oh, yeah, that stuff's good, right? I'm not the only person who feels this way, but nonetheless, um, you know, I'm I'm always a little bit uh, wary there. But I, I, this is good work. This is very good work. I can tell that they put a lot of time and effort into this, and 
knowing them, that doesn't shock me. What I'm actually going to do, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm just going to, uh, I'm sandwiching things back together. If you want to go this full route, you, you will, no, oh, I am going to go ahead and lubricate it because that's what I do. That's who I am and I can't object to it. Above all, to thine own self be true, right? If I'm not over lubricating things, I'm a dead man. Uh, no, actually, I don't want to do this at all. What I want to do instead is I'm going to put this guy back together. I'm going to put the handle back together and then I'll install the blade. When I put the handle back together, you will understand exactly why I'm done. Uh, why uh, you don't need to do what I just did. So, okay, um, step one is to make sure I'm doing this right. Then make sure I'm on the right orientation, and I am. Because this little angle right here, this little chamfer, which again, nice, just beautifully done, uh, it needs to be uh, facing this direction, needs to be facing into this. Now, next step is going to be to put this guy into this area here uh, and snap this all into position. Uh, that went well. Okay, next step I'm going to go ahead and do, and this is out of order. This is not the way that I did it initially, but now that I realize how this is constructed, I realize that that's, that's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, install this little screw in here, and that'll keep that liner in position. And in this case, I am going to use a little bit of thread locker here um, because I don't... Here it's going straight into the... What feel to be are these line is steel a tie? Hold on. This feels steely, according to my magnets here. Um, but who knows? There's still a chance that I'm wrong. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is snap everything back together, and this is actually a major difference relative to. And by the way, with these locating pins, that's a snap. Uh, but this is a major difference relative to a lot of your conventional um, sliding bar style locks, uh, where it is actually very difficult to put the whole thing back together. By having the thumb stud, oh, I'm sorry, the, um, the, 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 the sliding bar stud be two pieces, that's not a problem at all. That's, in fact, very easy to do. Um, so this is actually better built for disassembly than most of these sliding bar style locks that I've dealt with, in fact, all of them come to think of it, um, than I've dealt with previously. So that makes this actually very easy. Combined with those little studs in the back there, um, I, I am duly impressed. So I've put a little bit of thread locker onto this guy, onto the sliding bar. Uh, what this does mean, though, is that it's very likely, and I'm being very cautious here because I don't want to cross-thread this, and it feels like it's wanting to cross-thread. So I'm just using the slightest little bit of tension here. And if it's not going forth with just the very tips of my fingers... I don't want it going forward. I don't want to crank on it. But what this does mean is that it may actually be tunable, the tension of the uh, of this. I don't want to make this too tight, or else it's going to not slide properly. And actually, come to think of it, as I was doing this, I probably could have and should have lubricated a little bit these runs here, basically where this sliding bar goes along the side there, and I could have done that while it was taken apart, but I think it'll work just fine this way. I'm using knife pivot lube here just because I like a little bit better the, the action on washers. Um, and uh, yeah, so okay. Next step that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make sure, and this is again just a safety step, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I see the little end of the omega-shaped spring sticking out to both sides. And indeed, yes, I do. I see it on this side and on that side, and in both cases, it's where I expect it. Given that I have proper spring tension, that shouldn't be a shock, but at the same time, it's a thing. I want to make sure that's okay. Next step. No Loctite, Nick! Stop! I, I'm going to purposefully cap up the Loctite, and I'm going to put it over here for the moment. Then I'm going to lose track of it, so remind me where it is. But uh, nonetheless, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to screw these guys in place. Uh, and... There we go. No, it's in. I didn't think I was going to care about or for that um, two-part sliding bar assembly, but this really was markedly easier than uh, any other sliding bar lock full disassembly I've dealt with, I'm pretty sure, ever. Um, given it, this only came out of uh, the sliding bar style locks, also known as the axis lock, um, only came out of patent incumbent a few years ago, uh, maybe a year ago, actually. Uh, so, you know, there's not been that much time for innovation. I feel like I want to tighten this up a little bit. 
Okay. That's running a little rough, but that'll smooth out over time. So, okay. Now what I have is actually exactly what I would recommend and the way that I would recommend you do this most of the time. I, I've not, I'm not putting this formally back together, but when you get this out of the box, so to speak, or when you get this out of your pocket after you've used it for several months and gotten it dirty, what you're going to have is just the pivot in place with these all in there. And so you'll unscrew the pivot and then you'll use some kind of a tool. And like I said, I happen to have this tool that is kind of special made for dealing with these access lock things, but you can do this with any kind of thing. And then you'll just push the pivot out. You'll push the pivot all the way through. And then at that point, your blade, as well as your washer, will come loose. And you, in fact, saw me do that earlier in this disassembly. So at that point, you'll be in this position here exactly. And once you're in this position, it's actually quite easy to proceed. So you clean off the pivot, which you'll need to do. You'll clean off the blade, which I've already done. You'll clean off the washers, which I've already shown you. And if you can't figure out how to clean out washers, then by God, I'm... No YouTuber is going to save you. But, um, yeah... I'm seeing a fair amount of thread locker on this guy, uh, so I want to make sure that I get rid of that, because I don't need that. There is a lot of thread locker on here, and in fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this little watch pivot tool, or uh, watch pivot tool. And there that went. All right, uh, back to the ranch. This is part of the reason, by the way, that I like uh, these iFixit drivers. They are aluminum. The chances of this scratching a steel blade are... Well, let's just put it this way. That's not the way hardness works. But okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use, not this, I'm going to use this, and I'm just going to kind of scrape this off. There we go. I'm having a little bit of sympathy right now for dental hygienists. That is not an easy job. Because they're scraping the tartar off the teeth. I'm doing Loctite tartar here at the moment. All right. Okay, that was completely random, but there were many jobs I respect, honestly. This is a weird tangent to go off on, but honestly, there were very few jobs that I feel like... I'm trying to think if there were any. Yeah, okay, well, they, 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 there were very few jobs out there in the world that I don't respect the people who are doing them well, right? I, I think no matter... It's, it's just a nasty and classist thing to say, Oh, you're only doing that? How oh, dare you? If somebody's really mastering what it is that they're trying to do, whether that's dental hygiene, whether that's forklift operation, as has recently become a meme, whether it's any damn thing, right? I mean, I think Mike Rowe's Dirty Jobs did a great job of covering this. If somebody's really doing something at the very best of their capacity, honestly, that's that's something that should be respected no matter what the job is. But anyways, um, wow, where the hell did that rant come from? Moving on. So your next step here is going to be, now that this pivot is cleaned up and ready to go, and actually I am going to go ahead and Loctite this, um, well, I'm thinking about it, and there we go, we have some Loctite on there. Uh, now that we are ready to put this guy back together, I'll show you how I will go about doing any of this. What I'll do is I will start off, and I'm looking at these uh, uh, washes here, and I'm just trying to get a sense of whether there's one side that looks like it's got more spin, uh, got more smoothness to it. If that's, if I find such a side, I will put it against the blade. So I'll go ahead, and I'm using a little bit more lubrication than usual, um, but the reason for it is actually that it will effectively help to seal the, the washer against the side of the blade. The moment, uh, this guy is just sort of on there, right? Um, and it's being held on by the surface tension of this lubricant. And again, we'll do the same thing over here. So now what I have is a blade and washers. And they're kind of in their, their, their natural position. Next step is going to be, I'm going to hold this guy in such a way that my washer is kind of up against my finger, and I'm going to go on ahead and do a little bit of insertion here. And the goal here is to insert this whole thing. And actually, just today, Notorious EDC, this is a, 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 a Dom is a great freaking guy. Um, one of the, the, the real ones, so to speak, in the uh, everyday com, uh, carry world. But he showed a, a trick that was just like, that's really dumb, and why did I not think of it? And that's brilliant. Um, which is that if you're dealing with a knife with an Axis-style sliding lock, uh, rather than holding it back all the time, just put a freaking Q-tip uh, half in there, and then it'll be out of the way. Because you won't be able to fully insert the pivot with the bar here in, in its fully closed position. Then it is necessary that the lock can't go all the way up onto the thing, so this makes it so that I no longer have to worry about that. This was a really brilliant thing that he posted, and it was just like, oh, huh, and next time I do one of these, I'm going to do that, and just today, turns out I'm doing it. 
So thanks, Tom. Appreciate that. Next thing I'm going to do. So right now I have <clears throat> this whole thing is ready to kind of be inserted. The washers are not wanting to go all the way in. That's completely fine. That's their lot in life, right? What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and use a business card. In this case, a, a rather fancy one. Uh, and I'm going to use that to kind of push my washers into position here. So we just push and we push and we push. And okay. So now what I've got here, you see there is a, uh, there's a washer on both sides. I, the, the washer is on the top here, and so there is a hole between those washers. What I want to do now is use something to sort of poke through the middle there. And as I do that, it's going to position the washers properly. And is this really the same size? Because that would be nice. No, this is just a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'll use the smaller side. Now at this point, uh, the washers should be pretty roughly in position. And actually, I'm doing this exactly backwards because the pivot needs to come through from the other side. But okay, everything's roughly in position. Next step is going to be, take my pivot here, and my goal is just going to be to slide this in. And I want to make sure that the D shape is in the right position. And now what I do is I... Holy crap, this is going better than expected. So what I did is I'm just pushing this guy through. But I need to make sure that I push it through in such a way that the washes aren't overlapping and everything sort of works out properly. Uh, it's stopping at a certain point here. And the question is why? why what is making this stop? One approach is going to be to loosen the, uh, the bar a little bit further. Okay, that seems to have done it. And then I put a little bit more gronk on it with my thumb, and then it, it popped the rest of the way through. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to clean out this pivot area, just in case. A little bit of extra thread lock I got in there. Now I'll pull this Q-tip out. Thanks, Tom. That was brilliant. You should follow. The other thing about Notorious EDC is that he's really good at pictures. I mean, that's literally his business, but, like, his gear pictures make me feel so lazy. Um, and to be fair, my gear pictures are so lazy. Uh, but, you know, uh, this isn't my day job. <laughs> and I'm not a good photographer. <laughs> but anyways, um, all right. Next thing. It's going to be to install the pivot. So now, actually, I'm sorry, there is one other thing I want to do. And I want to check in there to make sure that my washers are in the position I think they should be. Because it is possible that you could do that step and your washer is actually kicked over to here or something like that, right? But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my little light here. And then I'm going to stare down into the abyss. The abyss has stared back at me. And I see within it that there are washers in their proper position. This is really well put together. Uh, I'm sorry, not put together. Like, I'm, I'm just a jackass. I'm, I'm, but, like, the, the construction of this is very smart. Um, I like that. So, okay. I have over-tightened the pivot. There is no blade play, but I have over-tightened this pivot. So I'm going to tighten it less. Okay, good. No play, either direction. Okay. And the centering is dead on. Can I... I might actually have a little bit more looseness I can give this here. And we are... Yeah, now that is completely dead centered. Okay, right now, uh, the... the um, the action is not as smooth as I'd like it to be, but that's because I've not lubricated the last surface. I'm going to take a little bit more of my knife pivot lube here. Louvre. It's a lot like lube, but French and contains art. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and I'll put a couple of dots across the back there. Now what I do is I slide this along. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. No play, side to side, or up and down. Knife closes. God, that was easy. Well, okay, I mean, that was 25 minutes, but the reason it was 25 minutes is because I didn't do the official thing. So remember, if you're actually going to do this on your own, the way that you do it is you unscrew this, you push the pivot out, 
and then that puts you to minute number 18 or something like that. Then you just repeat those steps and everything goes back together. That was much less stressful than, <laughs> well, these guides and locks usually are. So uh, really nicely done here. Uh, I am not actually, I've decided I'm not doing the first impressions thing just because it ends up being really awkward, right? Um, I, I'm just going to drop the, the, the disassembly videos in the same day that the full videos go. Uh, that, that, that seems to work a little bit better. Um, and result in less confusion, oddly. But um, nonetheless, it's a great knife, is my first impression of it. Um, so there, there, there you go. I'm doing exactly what I just told you I'm not going to do. But uh, nonetheless, really well done. And I uh, hope this has been interesting to you. And have yourself an absolutely wonderful rest of the day. And now it's time to do the review. Bye now.